school uh, and all uh, and all the entries uh, in the course report. Okay, so uh, this guide, inshallah, will be shared uh, with the respected uh, coordinators. We will send it to you uh, to you, inshallah, tomorrow, and you can read it and have a general idea about the course report. Uh, so uh, we will start with today as a training session. We will give you the uh, guidelines, the, the report for, for, the, for everything that's related in the course. The third thing that we will do as a unit, uh, starting from tomorrow, inshallah, uh, we will start working on the course report, as I said before, uh, a hotline. Uh, I'll provide you, inshallah, uh, with a phone number that you can contact 24-7 to ask about anything related to the course report. This is the first thing. The second thing also, every day, we will have a video conference. Uh, we will provide you with a link for a video conference every day starting from 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. So if you have any question that is related to the course, and I'm not only talking about uh, coordinators, any respected teaching staff member who has any question related to the course can contact us directly through uh, the, uh, the video conference. Okay, guys? All right. So let's now go and talk about the course report. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to work on the course report as, a, as an instructor, okay? I'm going to log in to the system and I'm going to explain everything that is related to the course report. Every, the first thing that you need to go is to go to Nafad. The address to Nafad is <coughs> I am dot gov dot sorry dot s a okay here we go we go to nafad of course when we go to this uh, uh page we need to use the username and password okay here we need to use the username and password we usually use to log in to appshare so i'm going just to uh use them and log in in front of you you need the OTP in order to log in to, uh, uh, to the system. Here we go. All right. So we are now in. Okay. Now, after that, you need to go to University of Tabuk. And then directly to Mayar Plus. Now, when you log in to uh, the uh, to Mayar Plus, you need to make sure that you logged in to the correct year, okay? To the correct semester and correct year. We are now in the third semester of the academic year 44. So we go directly to 443. After that, we go to course reports and we go to course reports by section, okay? All right. Now, after that, we go to the course report, all right? We go to the course report and we start working on the course report. Now, as you can see in front of you, we have the course report. Some of the information uh, in, the, uh, in, in the report have already been uh, provided by the, uh, by the system, so we don't need to work on them. Now, I'll try to explain every part of the course report, and after I finish, inshallah, I'll give you some time to ask your questions. Now, the first entry uh, of the course report is topics not covered. In this part of the report, the respective teaching staff member needs to write the to topics uh, of the curriculum that he couldn't finish during the academic semester, okay? He needs or she needs to uh, write the topics that they couldn't uh, cover uh, through the academic semester. We start with topics. Uh, the teaching staff member needs to write the topic of the lesson. For instance, maybe you can write like unit four, lesson three, or unit four as a whole. If you haven't been able to finish the whole unit, you can write the, the unit, or you can write the unit and then the lesson, like unit four, lesson three. Reasons for not covering, you need to write here the reasons behind not being able to covering the uh, topic. For instance, the short, the, the semester was very short. I, need, uh, I needed to highlight 
or to focus on certain points in the curriculum, I, and I couldn't cover these topics. All right. Now, the third entry is extent of their impact on learning outcomes. Now, as you can see here, we're talking about learning outcomes. What is the meaning of here? What is the meaning here? We need to write the number of the learning outcome that is affected by not covering this topic. Where we can get the number of the learning outcome, we can go here. We have something called course learning outcomes assessment results. As you can see here, we have the learning outcomes of the whole con of the whole course. Okay, so we will need to decide which one of these learning outcomes might get affected by not being able to cover this topic. So we we need just to take the number, the number of the uh, CLO. We don't have to write all of it. Okay. It's just uh, you need to write the number. It's better you can also write the whole uh, the whole uh, course learning outcome, or or you can just write the number. Okay, so let's go back to here to this place. So here we need to write the topic, the reasons for not being able to cover the topic, and the extent of their impact on the learning outcomes. We write here, for instance, CLO 1.1, and we write the CLO. Now. Now, in the last part of this entry, we need to try the compensating action. What is the meaning of compensating action? We need, he we need here to write any actions that have been taken either by the instructor himself, herself, or by the uh, unit in order to uh, solve the problem that, that happened as a result of not being able to covering this uh, learning outcome. For instance, we can say, the material uh, has been covered through PPT uh, and uh, let's say videos, recorded videos, okay? So what you need to do here, you need just to write the uh, compensating action that you have done uh, as, as, as an instructor or as a whole unit in order to find solution for the problem. This is the first entry. Uh, if you haven't been able to cover like more than one topic, you need to write all of them, okay? If you haven't been able to cover a whole unit, you can just write the units, okay? It's better to write the number of the unit and the title of the unit, like unit four, uh, countries and cuisines, or unit five, so and so, all right? Reasons for not covering uh, the extent, the number of the uh, learning outcome, and the, uh, of course, the uh, learning outcome itself and the compensating action. Okay, after that, uh, we move to the second part of the course report, which is teaching strategies. Here we have the basic teaching strategies uh, that we should follow in the, in the teaching process of the course. These, te uh, these teaching strategies have been taken from the T4 form, from the, cor from the course specifications, okay? Uh, now, uh, where they implemented, here we need to write, we need to write and we need to describe and we need to describe if we were able to implement these teaching strategies or not, okay? So uh, let's say the first uh, plan teaching strategy, I was able to implement it, so I choose yes. Difficulties experienced uh, in the implementation. If I didn't find any difficulties, I should write here, no difficulties experienced in the process of the uh, implementation. Suggested action, if, if there are no troubles, no problems, you can just write an A, not applicable. But if you face the problems, for instance here, let's say uh, in this uh, teaching strategy, uh, you face some trouble, so you, you write, no, I couldn't implement it. You need to write the reasons for not being able to, impl to implement the teaching strategies. For instance, the students uh, level or language competence is very weak, so I couldn't use this teaching strategy in order to achieve the target, uh, let's say learning outcome. Okay, so you can hear, uh, you can write here the reasons and the difficulties you faced uh, in this um, matter. And what are the suggested actions? What, what is the meaning of suggested actions? What are the actions that you will be able or you can take 
in the coming semesters in, uh, in order not to face the same trouble. And I will explain later where you can write these suggestions. You can write the suggestion here, and later on we will need to put these suggestions in another place, okay? So this is the second entry of the course report. Let's move now to the activities and assessment method, which is the third entry, the third part of the course report. Here we have the assessment methods in the uh, course that, that of course, the teaching, uh, the, the respected teaching staff member should uh, have used in order to assist the students in the teaching course. All right, as you can see here, we have summative, as, uh, summative assessment, module exam number one, 40 persons, so on and so forth. Here, the same, you need to say whether these teaching uh, or let's say assessment methods implemented or not. So you need to choose either yes or no, okay? In the two cases, you need to write your comments here. Uh, difficulties experienced, if any, in implementations. If I didn't find, uh, if I didn't face any difficulties, I can just write no difficulties were experienced in the process. If I faced any difficulties, I can, I can just write that uh, I faced this uh, assessment or this trouble, okay? The suggested action, the same as here. You need to write what is the suggested action that you can use in the coming semesters in order to overcome this difficulty and find solution for uh, for using this, uh, let's say, assessment method. Now, let's say here, for instance, I couldn't give a quiz, okay? I can, for instance, write here that uh, the semester was very short and I couldn't uh, conduct a quiz number two. Uh, you need here to write the suggested actions and you can also write what are the compensating actions. For instance, you can write, that I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, for instance, uh, you can write, for instance, I couldn't, uh, let's say, uh, uh, sorry, I, I was just reading the letters from the teaching staff members, Dr. Ah, uh, Dr. Akram, some, some of the teaching staff members can't log into the meeting. Anyway, uh, uh, so suggested actions, you can, for instance, uh, write, uh, let's say, uh, the, uh, the grades uh, or the marks percentage of this quiz uh, have been distributed uh, on uh, course projects. Okay, you can just write what is the thing that you have uh, done in order to avoid, uh, let's say, facing the problem in relation to uh, the uh, grading thing and assessing thing. So this is the, the third entry, which is activities and assessment methods. You need to choose whether the assessment method uh, uh, was implemented or not. What are the difficulties that you have experienced and what are the suggested actions or compensating actions that you have taken in order to avoid uh, the uh, or find solution for the issue. Now let's move to the, uh, to the very, very, very important uh, part of the course report, which is the grades. In this part, we have the grades of the students, okay? And we have the comments on students' results. Now in this part, the respected teaching staff member needs to present a comprehensive and complete comprehensive and complete description of the grades distribution in his group, okay? But before presenting this distribution, the teaching staff member needs to make sure that the grades are available. As you can see here, the grades are not available. If you log into the system and you can't find the grades, the grades are not uh, available, you can just click this, refresh grades. Okay, and you need to wait, to wait. As you can see now, the grades in my course report appeared. Okay, if, if you try to use this icon, refresh grades, and the results did not appear, okay, you can do the following. First of all, you need to inform your coordinator. Your coordinator needs to contact with us and tell us that the respected, this respected teaching staff member in my group can't 
uh, find the grades, can't locate the grades in his course report, or the grades in his course report uh, do not appear. All right, this is the first action. You need to inform your coordinator. The second thing, uh, you need to go back to, uh, to Sahel. You need to go back to Sahel, as I am doing, and you need to go to technical support. You go here, technical support, okay? You go to uh, information technology, and you need to report the issue here, okay? For instance, here we need uh, Sahel. We go to Sahel, and we write here, for instance, solving a problem in uh, Sahel service. We click here and we write the information or the problem that we have faced, okay? So these are the two things that you need to do if you faced, sorry, if you faced an issue with, uh, with the grades, the grades do not appear, okay? The first thing you need to refresh your grades and the second thing you need to report the issue uh, through your coordinator to the unit and through technical support uh, to the uh, supervised unit. Now, if the grades appear like here, you need now to write a comment on the grades. The comment should include, should uh, I mean the comment in general, should uh, present a general comprehensive description of the grades distribution in your group. And you highlight, you highlight any inflation or deflation in the groups, okay? I'll explain how. For instance, here in my group, I have two students who scored A+. I need to describe now, I don't have like to mention the names of the students, but I can like talk about them in general. Like I can say like 7% of the students, 7% of the students, couldn't log, uh, sorry, 7% of the students scored uh, A plus because of the following reasons. Uh, they have a high uh, language competence. Uh, they scored very high in the first and second uh, exams. They attended all the exams. They submitted all the, uh, let's say, uh, alternative assessment homeworks. So you need to, uh, uh, give a general description, a general description of everything that is related to uh, the percentage uh, in, uh, in every uh, grade rate, okay? If you have inflation or deflation, you need to focus on them. For instance, my group is like uh, 12 students. Let's say six students scored A+. Plus. It means that I have inflation uh, in grade A plus. So I need to present clear, clear uh, description. Why do I have this number, this percent in my grades? Uh, I need to do the same with all the different percentages. Okay. I need to do the same with all the different uh, grades. And I need to focus on these following uh, status. First, uh, sorry. First, I need to focus on the denied entry. I have four students who were not allowed to enter the exam. Why? I need to explain. I say like 14.29% of the students or four students were not allowed to attend the exam. Why? One of the students, for instance, did not show up from the uh, beginning of the semester. One of the students exceeded the uh, limited amount of uh, absentee, uh, absentees, okay? So you need to give a clear and comprehensive description about every percent in grades. We don't have issues with in, in progress, incomplete. Uh, we need also to focus on fail and withdrawal. Three students failed in the uh, course, why? Okay, okay, or like 10%, uh, of the students uh, failed in the course. Why? Because of the following reasons. One of the students did not attend the first and second uh, module exams. He did not uh, submit the uh, so and so, uh, so and so forth, like the uh, summative uh, skills. 
The same thing with the withdrawal cases. We, I have three students who dropped the course. Why? One of them did not show up from the beginning of the course. Uh, so I don't know anything about him. The two other students decided to leave the university for God because one of them, let's say, attended the armed forces. The other thing, for instance, decided to join the uh, industry field. So you need to describe all the different uh, grade distributions in your uh, grades, but you need to focus on the inflation and deflation cases and on the students who failed, on the students who uh, dropped the course, on the students who were not allowed to attend the exam. So the comment here should be complete, comprehensive, and should account for all these different percentages. Now, if the respected teaching staff member, did, uh, if, if, if he or she uh, uh, doesn't uh, present a comprehensive description, the form, the report will be sent back to them, okay? So please make sure to present a complete comment on the results of the student. This is a very, very important part of the course report. Now, after that, we go to the course learning outcomes assessment results. Now, here we need to uh, present the percentages uh, of the students uh, and the, who, who managed to achieve the uh, learning outcomes. Now, this is a very important table. Let me explain it for you. In the first column, we have the course learning outcomes. These are the learning outcomes that the students need to achieve in the learning process. Here we have PLO code. What is the meaning of PLO code? PLO stands for the program learning outcomes. The outcomes here are the outcomes which are related to the whole program. They are taken from the mission and vision of the, of the whole program. And they are also designed in the light of the vision and mission of the whole university. Okay, so uh, you now have to write the we provide you uh, with, with all the things that are related to the course learning outcomes and the assessment methods. Now here, what we need to do is we need to write two different percentages. The first percentage is the target level criterion for success. What is the meaning of this? We should have a certain percentage which, uh, which stands as an indicator of achieving this learning outcome. For instance, I have a group of like, let's say 30 students. Um, the, this, person, uh, this percentage is given usually by the assessment unit. Let's say here the percentage is, uh, or the percent is 60%, okay? If the students achieved 60%, it means that the students in your group managed to achieve this learning outcome. So. The percentages here are indicators of achieving a certain uh, learning outcome. In the second column here, we, we write the actual level, the actual level of students. And uh, also we need to write a different percentage here. And at the end of the uh, table, we need to write comments on the percentages. If there is like a huge difference between the two percentages, we need to comment here. Now, how we can find these percentages for the time being, I don't think that the teaching staff members can do that because the quality assurance unit is working uh, these days on a matrix. Inshallah, we might start using it uh, from next year. This matrix, it's like an Excel sheet, which helps you to uh, know, the, which help you to study and to see uh, and to measure the different or the actual level of students in achieving a certain learning outcomes. So for the time being, you won't be able to write these percentages. Now, what is the solution to this issue? Inshallah, tomorrow, when I share with you the guide, I'll share with you a small, okay, I'll share with you a small uh, PDF file, a T7 file, it has these percentages, okay? But for now, I can give you an example. We have three different entries. We have knowledge 
and understanding, we can put here 60% and also here 60%. And we can write here, uh, let's say uh, the percentage is within the uh, acceptable or satisfactory boundaries. The percentage is within the acceptable or satisfactory boundaries. For uh, knowledge and understanding, you can just put 60%. For skills, 70%. Here, the same. Of course, this is temporary. Inshallah, next year, we will start working on the, with, with, the, with the matrix, okay? With the values, we will go back to 60%. So here you just need to write 60, 60 with all these entries with the skills 70, 70 and with the values 60, 60%. And here in the comments, you just need to write the results are within uh, the acceptable boundaries or within the satisfactory boundaries and that's it. Okay, inshallah next semester when we will start working with the matrix, uh, things will be different. All right, now, in this entry, we need to present or we need to write the results of the questionnaire. Here we have student evaluation of the quality of the course. In this entry, we need to write the results of the questionnaire that was sent out to students by you. You remember the questionnaire? Now, how and where can I find the questionnaire? I'll help you. You go back to course report by section. All right, you will find here, of course, you need to close the questionnaire first or the survey. If it's still open, you need to close it. After you close it, you will have course evaluation statistics. All right, you can click on it. When you click on it, it will lead you directly to the results of the questionnaire. As you can see here, we have the results of, of the questionnaire. Now, unfortunately, We've contacted the quality assurance unit many times and we requested that this uh, survey should be translated into English. But for the time being, it's only available in Arabic. So if you, are, if you can't speak Arabic, you need to ask one of your colleagues who's, who's a bilingual, maybe they can help you with completing the form. Now, I have the results of the questionnaire. I can download them either as PDF and X or Excel, okay? So I can get the results of the questionnaire and I can start uh, writing the, uh, uh, the data uh, where needed. Now let's go back to the, uh, to the same place. Date of survey, you need to write the date of survey. Uh, let's say May uh, 2023, okay? May 2023, number of participants and percentage of participants, where you can get them, if you go back here to course report by section, you will find them here. The percentage is 46.4% and the number of students is 13. So you go directly, sorry, you go directly to the course report and you write here, you write here, the number of participants 13 and the percentage is so and so, okay? Now the evaluation result, what is the evaluation result? The evaluation is result is the average scored by all the entries here, okay? Now this average should be a numerical value and it should be out of five. Now, how can I get the average? How can I get the average? There are different ways. I think most of you are experienced in statistics. There are different ways in getting the average, the general average, but one of them is you can uh, divide the sum of all these values on their number, okay? The sum of all these values on their number. We have here 24, you can uh, divide the sum of all these values on their number. So you will get a number out of, out of five, okay? So what you need to write here is the evaluation result. It should be out of five. Now, let's go to the second part of the questionnaire or the survey feedback. Now here, 
you have students feedback and mm -hmm. course coordinator instructor comments and response here you need to collect some data from the survey and here you need to comment on the information collected from the survey now what is the meaning of strength and strength here you need to write sorry uh i'm trying to find the questionnaire all right uh in the strength you need to write the points here that is called the highest the highest score okay you need to choose the points from these entries that achieved the highest score maybe one maybe two maybe three points and you need to write them where you need to write them sorry you need to write them here these are the strength points now the areas of improvement you need to write the points that scored the lowest the lowest score the points with the lowest score maybe three maybe four points okay and remember that we have add so you don't copy and paste all the points and and just write them directly you need to add each point separately okay for instance the first point uh the uh let's say uh the curriculum design okay and i click what add and then i add the second point so each point should be entered should be uploaded separately all right the same with areas of improvement the areas of improvement the areas that need to be in your teaching uh, process so you need to choose the points with the lowest score now suggestions for improvement are the suggestions presented by students for improving the course you can go down here and you will write you will find what are the suggestions that you can present for improving the course all right you can write from these suggestions which are presented by the uh, students now if you did if you can't find any suggestions please please use your own language and write some suggestions for improvement in the course report you should not and i highlight this word you should not leave anything empty okay so if you can find any suggestions for improvement, you need to write uh, certain points from your own experience. Now here in this field, we need to write the comments by the instructor on these points. For instance, the strength points, you can write uh, like your comment on the strength points. The curriculum was chosen uh, carefully after a long period of study uh, by the curriculum unit and so on and so forth. So you need to write your comment on these points the same with the areas of improvement and the same with the suggestions for improvement so this part is related to the questionnaire please make sure to download the questionnaire you can download it from here and you uh if you if you can't uh let's say understand arabic you can ask the help of one of your colleagues and the team okay all right uh, so let's okay go. dr Mu'tasim, i think there's yeah. question here uh, the question in the chat box that uh, Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth, uh, says that can I write no suggestions were given? Is it okay? Uh, well, I think it's better to write suggestions. I will. I will explain why. Okay, I will explain why. Because at the end of the course report, uh, inshallah, I'll give some time for the teaching staff for, for the respected teaching staff members to ask you questions, but since you asked the question, I can answer it. It's bitter, it's bitter to write suggestions because at the end of the, co of the course report, we need to present an action plan. The action plan should be uh, written in the light of all suggestions and comments presented in the report. So if you have suggestions, you can just use them and write in the action plan. That I'm going to design the action plan in the light of these suggestions. It's okay if you write no suggestions, but I don't think that it's it's it, it's better. Uh, I don't think that we have a perfect course. I don't think that we have a teaching staff member who's like perfect in everything. There's always something missing. Okay, um, maybe okay. Not, not a, 
All right. Uh, so, I'm sorry for the disruption, but uh, should I let the questions at the end of the, the, the session, Dr. Uh, yeah, Martin, yeah, or, yeah, please, or, please. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. please. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, um, welcome. Uh, sure. Now, uh, difficulties and challenges here, the respected teaching staff member needs to write any, any difficulties and challenges that they faced during the semester in these areas. First, administrative issues. Number two, learning resource. And number three, facilities. Okay. Now, in the first entry, you need to write the, the, the kind of the difficulty. For instance, in learning resources, uh, we couldn't find, for instance, uh, I tools uh, mediums for this course. Or, for instance, uh, the, 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 the students couldn't find the book in the uh bookshops all right so you can write here the difficulty that you faced either in administrative issues in learning resources or in facilities for instance in facilities you can write for instance the classroom is too crowded and i couldn't perform uh correctly uh with a very very small and crowded classroom all right what are the consequences what what are the consequences which resulted from this difficulty. For instance, the class uh, was too crowded. Uh, I couldn't perform successfully. The students couldn't uh, interact successfully with the material exposed to them in the uh, classroom, all right? So you need to write here the consequences, the results of the difficulties and challenges on the teaching process. Now here in the actions, in the actions taken, you need to write what are the actions that you took or the unit uh, responsible about this issue, all right, uh, took in order to overcome this issue. For instance, and in, 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 in the issue which I uh, mentioned, the, the, the overcrowded classes, uh, the, uh, let's say the IL admin, uh, contacted the, the the faculty and they transformed the students into uh, a, a better uh, classroom. All right. So you need here to write what are the actions taken either by, by you as a teaching staff member or by the concerned party in this matter. So here, what you need to write is the difficulties and challenges that you faced in the process. Please, again, do not leave anything empty. I think that you must have faced certain administrative issues, okay? Maybe with a certain faculty where you teach. Uh, learning resources, what are the issues that you faced in the learning resources, okay? The same with the facilities. All right, now we come to the, to the, to the final part of the course report, which is the action plan for next semester. This is very, very important part of the course report. Why? I'll explain now. First of all, here you need to write in the light of the issues which you collected, either from the different entries here, from the feedback of students, from the difficulties that you have faced, all the issues that you mentioned in the course report, you need to write your action plan to solve these issues, okay? The recommendation, for instance, uh, I have problem with the receptive skill uh, with the students. They're very weak with the, in, in, in relation to the receptive uh, skills. So what I can write here, um, uh, let's say, uh, increase the extracurricular activities in relation to the receptive skills, okay? Uh, or the problem, uh, the actions here, what are the actions that you need to take or yeah, that you will, will take? Uh, for instance, I will increase uh, the extracurricular activities in relation to the receptive skills. I will contact the, uh, let's say, the curriculum unit and ask them to uh, redesign the course and add many uh, extracurricular activities in relation to the receptive skills. Responsibility for implementation. Which party is responsible for the implementation of this action entry? Uh, the respect you. You can write, for instance, the curriculum unit and the respected teaching staff members, the assessment unit or the uh, and the respected teaching staff members, the quality assurance unit and the IL admin. All right. 
here you need to write when you start and when you end implementing the action uh, plan the action plan should be uh designed for a semester so if we're talking about next semester we're talking about uh the first semester which will start for instance let's say uh august uh 20th of august till for instance september uh 15. okay so you write here the start time and the end time of this of the uh, uh of the semester and the last part here you need to write the needed support what is the meaning of needed support what kind of support you need in order to achieve this point for instance i need the uh uh, cooperation of the uh, curriculum units. I need, uh, let's say, uh, extra curricular activities in the curriculum. I need so and so. So you need to write what kind of support you need. If you have issues with the with the facilities, you can write here. Uh, I need, for instance, uh, bigger or wider uh, teaching avenues, which are provided with the latest uh, audiovisual methods. Uh, methods, sorry. So after that, please, please, in relation to the action plan, don't write only one point. Like, try to write two or three points minimum. Okay. Now, after this, you come to the end of the course. We have two options here: either save as a draft or save and send to confirm. Now, if you are still working on the uh, on the course report, you can just save as a draft. Okay and you can complete the course report later if you finished the course report and you are sure that it's perfect now it's ready you can just click save and send to confirm now please please pay attention to the following points number one complete the whole course report don't leave anything empty number two please do not copy and paste from your colleagues because when you finish the course reports, I will have them all as one report. So it will appear clearly for me that you have copied uh, from a certain uh, resource. Okay, please use your own language and write according to your experience. Now, after you save and send, after you, you finish the report and you send it, you need to recheck, you need to log into the system again and check if the report is confirmed, okay? If the report is confirmed, then your work is done. That's it. But, but the quality assurance unit works 24 seven during these days. So any problem, any issue, any incomplete entry in the course report will lead to the course report being sent back to the teaching staff member which means that you need you need to log in after you send the report. Uh, you need to log in and check uh, for the course report. Sometimes we resend the, uh, the course report for the teaching staff member for editing certain entries. Having said that, I need to highlight a very important point. Now, in the light of the IL directives, the quality assurance unit, will issue two reports on daily basis starting from tomorrow inshallah at the end of the day of the day around 12 uh, a.m we will issue two reports the first report will be will include the names of the t of the respected teaching staff members who still did not okay uh they, they still uh, did not work on the on the course report they still did not finish the course report the second uh, report is for those who finished the report and sent it, but the report was reviewed and it was sent back to them with certain things that need to be edited. Now, why do we need to make this report? Because in the last semester, some of the respected teaching staff members used just to send a save and forget about it. Okay, and we sent many messages to them via system, but they did not care about that. Okay. So these two reports will go directly to the coordinators. So they will share the reports with you and they will go directly to the IL admin. So please guys, make sure that you have completed the course report in the uh, most, let's say, perfect way that you can 
uh, present in relation to any course report. Now that's it for for my uh, for my session today. Inshallah, tomorrow uh, I will provide you with this guide. This guide includes everything that you need to do to uh, to know, uh, starting from logging in to the system uh, till you save and confirm the report. It has some examples that you can use, but don't copy. Okay, you can use and you can just. Uh, design your answer in the light of these, uh, let's say, uh, information. Uh, and as I said before, uh, tomorrow, inshallah, I will be, or the unit will be online every day from 5 till 10 p.m. So if you have any question, if you need to contact me, I'll provide you with my mobile number and I will also be online every day. Uh, we will send you a link. Uh, for a Google Meet, you can log into the Google Meet and address me address me directly in relation to anything that's related uh, to the course report. That's it. Thank you very much for your time and for your, uh, uh, let's say, uh, patience. And may Allah make everything easy uh, for all of us till the end of the semester. Thank you, Dr. Akram, for your time and for the respected teaching staff members as well. Thank uh, you, Dr. Mu'atasim. Thanks a lot, Dr. Mu'atasim. You made it very clear. Sure. Yeah, I, I think that there is only one question here. Uh, if you may allow me to say this question. Yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, this is Oyanda. Oyanda asks, uh, Doctor, for non-Igama holders, having access to the Sahel uh, platform was very challenging for us uh, previously. How can we access the platform required to complete the process as non-Igama holders? So yeah. this is Oyanda. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, first of all, let me say I'm deeply sorry for those who have problems with the with the with the uh, with the Sahel uh, platform, the problem lies in the fact that, unfortunately, uh, some of the respected teaching staff members don't have Iqame. Now, if you don't have Iqame, you definitely can't log into the system. Why? Because the system is designed uh, through which you can log in only by using the credentials of Ipsha. So, if you don't have an Ipsha account, you won't be able to log in to the system. So we will be forced to exclude your group from the from the uh, from the course report. Now, some of the respected teaching staff members uh, they have iqama, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, the deanship of uh, information technology, uh, some of the respected teaching staff members uh, they have this issue. But we worked hard during the uh, the the the, uh, the last months to solve this issue. Uh, the the number of the iqama was uh, entered mistakenly by the guys uh, who uh, who work in the in the IT. So uh, those who uh, gave us uh, who informed us about this issue, we managed to visit the uh, the 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 deanship and we managed to find solution uh, for the issues. But if you don't have iqama. Till now, I don't think that you'll be able to do the course report. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, I'll send the form for the respected teaching staff members who don't have Iqama. So uh, their their course reports will be excluded and uh, we will inform, inshallah, the IL and admin. So don't worry about this issue, okay? Uh, okay. Thank you, Dr. Mu'atasim. And there's sure. one thing that left for our respected staff members that the, this session has been recorded. So yes. we will send the, the session link, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Akram. Thank you, yes, Dr. Dr. Akram. One okay, minute. Thank thank you. You. Very informative and it was very clear. And I want to assure everyone that this session has been recorded and we're going to send it very soon. Okay, for those who face, for those who uh, face any problem, personal problem, as uh, Mr. Mautasim said that, okay, he can uh, directly contact the coordinator uh, through uh, through who who's going to uh, contact uh, Dr. Mautasim. Okay, to make it easy for everyone. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Enjoy your time.